At the White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. believes that at least 3,000 North Korean soldiers traveled by ship to Vladivostok, Russia's largest Pacific port, in early to mid-October. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training, Kirby said. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is certainly a highly concerning probability. Kirby said they could go to Western Russian and then engage in combat against Ukraine's forces. If North Korean soldiers do enter into combat, this development would demonstrate Russia's growing desperation in its war against Ukraine, Kirby said. South Korean intelligence first publicized reports that the Russian Navy had taken 1,500 North Korean special warfare troops to Russia this month, while Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said his government had intelligence that 10,000 North Korea soldiers were being prepared to join the invading Russian forces. Russia and North Korea have denied the troop movements. They have sharply boosted their cooperation in the past two years, and in June they signed a major defense deal requiring both countries to use all available means to provide immediate military assistance if either is attacked. So, uh, just before uh, I kick off on those issues, uh, I think as you have all heard uh, earlier this morning, we have seen the public reporting indicating that North Korean soldiers are traveling to Russia to fight against Ukraine. We're working closely with our allies and partners to gain a full understanding of this situation, but today I'm prepared to share what we know at this stage. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into eastern Russia. We assess that these soldiers traveled by ship from the Wonsan area in North Korea to Vladivostok, Russia. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will en enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. After completing training, these soldiers could travel to Western Russia and then engage in combat against the Ukrainian military. We have briefed the Ukrainian government on our understanding of this situation, and we're certainly consulting closely with other allies, partners, and countries in the region on the implications of such a dramatic move, move and on how we might respond. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into eastern Russia. For the time being, we will continue to monitor this situation closely. But let's be clear. If North Korean soldiers do enter into combat, this development would demonstrate Russia's growing desperation in its war against Ukraine. Russia is suffering extraordinary casualties on the battlefield every single day, but President Putin appears intent on continuing this war. If Russia is indeed forced to turn to North Korea for manpower, this would be a sign of weakness, not strength, on the part of the Kremlin. It would also demonstrate an unprecedented level of direct military cooperation between Russia and North Korea, with security implications in Europe as well as the Indo-Pacific. As we have said before, Russia's cooperation with the North Korean military is in violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions, which prohibit the procurement of arms from North Korea and military arms training. This move is likewise a violation. President Biden's direction, the United States continues to surge security assistance to Ukraine. In just the past week, which I think you've seen, the United States has announced more than $800 million in security assistance to meet Ukraine's urgent battlefield needs. It's another example of how Mr. Putin's war of aggression has only unified and strengthened the resolve of G7 countries and our partners to defend shared values. Is the assessment that the presence of North Korean troops can have a meaningful trajectory um, on the, the war. Um, and then secondly, you've said earlier even um, that it shows a sign of desperation on the Russians. But does it also demonstrate North Korea's commitment to this burgeoning alliance with Russia? And is, is that in and of itself a broadening and discouraging concern for America? So on your first question, too soon to tell. Uh, um, uh, what kind of an impact these troops can have on the battlefield because we just don't know enough about um, what 
the intention is in terms of using them. Um, so I, I think that's why I said at the top, we're gonna monitor this and watch it closely. To your second question, yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we've also said, yes, I've called this a sign of desperation and a sign of weakness. It's not like Mr. Putin's being very honest with the Russian people about what he's doing here. I mean, Mr. Peskov, his spokesman just the other day, denied knowing anything about it. Um, but, uh, but we've also talked many, many times about the burgeoning and growing defense relationship between North Korea and Russia and how uh, reckless and dangerous we think that is, not only for the people of Ukraine, and clearly we'll watch to see what this development means for them, but also for the Indo-Pacific region. Very specific assessment at this time of the exact nature of all the training. There's About 3,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia and they are now receiving training on drones and other equipment before being deployed to battlefields in Ukraine, South Korea's spy chief told lawmakers Monday. In a closed-door parliamentary committee briefing, National Intelligence Service Director Cho Taeyong said another 1,500 North Korean troops have joined the 1,500 his agency estimated were in the country last week, according to lawmaker Park sun won who attended the briefing. Park said that the NIS had confirmed North Korea sent 1,500 special operation forces to Russia this month. Cho told lawmakers that his agency assessed that North Korea aims to deploy a total of 10,000 troops to Russia by December, Park told reporters. Lawmaker Lee Song Quian also said the agency found that Russia is hiring Korean translators and educating North Koreans on special warfare. Hyundai,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家者,出家